Oh, hey, welcome back, guys. Do you guys like magazines? You guys like video games? You guys like things that some people may consider to be retro? Well, you guys are all in luck today because we're going to take a look at the June 1995 issue of Game Pro. And this is a pretty good one, so. Let's kick things off. Alright, so in this edition of Game Pro, June 1995, they're kind of showcasing the big consoles that were coming. The Big Bang. New game systems are born. First thing we see opening this thing up is a Sega Saturn ad. And really it's, it's quite odd, just like a lot of the advertising was for the Saturn. Here's an ad for a game that I've never even heard of. It's called Warlock. It says, beware the ultimate evil, Warlock, based on the hit movie. I didn't even, didn't even know this was a movie. It looks like it came out for the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. It looks interesting enough. Here's another interesting thing. This is an ad for Congo the Movie Upper Deck Trading Cards. Okay, we got a pretty cool ad here for Mortal Kombat 3, the arcade game. This is a pretty cool ad for Game Boy. They had just come out with different colors. And it looks like there's some kind of free sunglasses sweepstakes that they have going on here. I've always liked these uh, letters that fans send in. I used to always read these when I was a kid. This one here entitled Jabbin' at the Jag. I'm a disgruntled 27-year-old Jaguar owner. When it was first released, the Jag had a major advantage over the competition because it was the first 64-bit system. <laughs> but Atari frittered away its edge with poor games and endless delays for new games. Doom and Alien vs. Predator were great, but where are the RPGs, the strategy games, and the sports titles? I got the Jag because I wanted to go beyond 16-bit gaming, but it's my 16-bit machine that I still play every day, and it's the Jag that sits in the closet. Unless Atari bends over backward to repair its reputation, it'll be tr I'll be trading in my Jaguar for an Ultra 64 later this year. And this is the reply he got. Stand by. Atari recently announced that it's working with Williams Entertainment to bring Mortal Kombat 3 to the Jaguar by spring of 1996. That's the only answer they had for him. One game, and it wasn't even the kind of game he was asking for. He was asking about strategy games and RPGs. Nice. The fan art was always pretty cool too. I, I used to uh, draw pictures of video games and stuff like that when I was a kid, but I never really sent anything into these magazines. I probably should have. This is pretty cool. It's a little uh, story about arcade games that were out at the time or coming out. And they have uh, a little preview here for Street Fighter the movie. And it's weird. They're kind of all over the place. They kind of praised the graphics, saying they were nice and crystal clear. But they say, and the gameplay, though, quirky and hard to get used to is easy to learn. If it's hard to get used to, how is it easy to learn? And why is it hard to get used to? It's exactly like any other Street Fighter. It plays exactly the same. I don't get that one. This looks like a cool little game here from Jalico, Super Circuit. Super Circuit is the latest driving title by Jalico. This two-player racing game uses great graphics to enhance the fast-moving driving experience. I've never even I've never even heard of that game. It actually looks really cool. I like arcade racers a lot. Down here, Namco. They just 
were really dominant back then in the arcades. They had a lot of cool looking games. And here's an ad for the infamous 64-bit system, the Jaguar. It's only $159.99, which was actually really cheap. I believe the uh, Saturn at the time was like 400 bucks or 450 bucks. So a lot of the competition was expensive, but this thing just wasn't that great. I had a buddy who got one when it came out, and uh, it came with Cybermorph, and we sat there and played it. I spent the night at his house. We played it all night, but it really wasn't that fun. We weren't having that much fun. We were just playing it because it was the only game he had. Revenge of the PC games. The Saturn PlayStation Ultra 64 and 3DO multiplayer are high-profile CD-ROM game systems but one CD game machine could eclipse them all, the personal computer. Well, to be honest, I never really played PC games much as a kid. I, I didn't have a PC until like the late 90s, so I didn't really get to uh, experience any of these, but I had a few friends at the time that had PCs and were really into PC gaming, but usually more uh, strategy games and RPGs and stuff like that. And here's an ad for the 32X. And this was one console that uh, I just never really wanted as a kid. I was one of those kids that wanted just about every console that came out. This was one I didn't really want. I, I never asked for it. And uh, it just wasn't impressive. I remember looking at some of the game previews saying, I have games that look just like that on the Super Nintendo or the Sega Genesis already. Why would I want this? I don't It just, uh, I wasn't impressed. Here's a special feature, Online Video Game Information Part 2. This is pretty much just um, information about the internet and gaming and how you can go online to find tips and tricks and information about video games. Uh, it says here, some game enthusiasts are also publishing their own home pages on the World Wide Web with detailed text and images of games. Best of all, the pages are often interconnected so you can find new sites by surfing through the links. Pretty cool, I guess, at the time. Here's another Game Boy ad. I noticed there's a lot of Game Boy ads in this issue. This is another one. Uh, looks like it's for Kirby's Dream Land 2, but at the bottom they're kind of showing off the different colors again. And here's the cover article. Um, this one is about the new systems that were coming out at the time and this page here kind of showcases the Saturn and I'll be honest out of the three they feature here they really have the most information on the Saturn the most pictures um, and it just looks like they're really hyping up the Saturn the most and I'll be honest I got the Saturn because of articles like this I was kind of duped into thinking it was the best one out of the three and uh, it quickly died off. I was very disappointed within within eight, nine months. I mean, I'd go to Blockbuster and there was like no games on the shelf and the PlayStation had rows and rows and rows and rows of games. And you know, there was no way I was getting a PlayStation at that point for another few years at least. So this shows off some games that we knew were coming out at the time like Virtual Fighter, Clockwork Knight, Daytona USA, Panzer Dragoon, I mean, you got sports titles, a little something for everybody, really. Fighting, racing, platforming, adventure. I mean, they just made it look really cool. The page on the PlayStation here really doesn't show a whole lot. It shows a picture of the console, um, a picture of a developmental team, and then um, a little tiny screenshot of ESPN Extreme, which would later become One Extreme, I believe. And there's even less on the Ultra 64, which later became the Nintendo 64. Um, it shows a screenshot and says Top Gun, which ended up being a canceled game. Uh, it shows Cruising USA, which was cool, Killer Instinct, and then a picture of Turok the Dinosaur Hunter, but it's, uh, it's more of an illustration, it's not a screenshot. There's not even a picture of the console, which is kind of disappointing. I don't know if at the time, I guess we didn't know what it looked like because the cover doesn't even have a picture of it. It just has an Ultra 64 logo. This is kind of cool. It's uh, the very first E3, the Electronic Entertainment Expo. It says, hot hardware for 95, E3. 
And again, it shows uh, pictures of the Saturn PlayStation, the Panasonic 3DO, shows the Atari Jaguar with the um, Jaguar CD attachment. And then again, it just shows a picture of the Nintendo Ultra 64 logo. On the next couple pages here, we actually have like a layout of E3 for that year with uh, where everybody's booths are. And it's kind of funny here. Sega's got a lot of space. They got three different, uh, three different sections set up. The PlayStation, PlayStation booth is pretty big too, the area for, for Sony. On the next page, there's a little bit of info regarding the Jaguar CD. It says, the Jaguar CD should arrive just in time for the show. This long-awaited peripheral adds more hardware muscle to the system, but everybody wants to see the games. Among the list of discs, Blue Lightning sounds like a winner, and Highlander, Dragon's Lair, and Battle Morph will arrive soon as well. In the Nintendo of America section, there's really not a whole lot as far as the Ultra 64 goes, but there are a few screenshots here of Star Fox 2 for the Super Nintendo, which ended up being canceled, which is really a shame, but you can still find the game um, as a reproduction cart. Another cool thing here, at the time uh, SNK was coming out with the Neo Geo CD, it says, SNK has a nifty hunk of hardware ready to cross into the US, the Neo Geo CD. The master plan calls for all existing Neo Geo games to be ported over to CD format, while all new games will be released for arcades, Neo Geo carts, and CDs. As for the games, check out Fatal Fury 3 and hope that King of Fighters 95 is here. Here's uh, some kind of fold-out poster for the 3DO or advertisement. I don't know what this is. It says, Best Game System of 1994. The Miami Herald, December 1994. I mean, the 3DO, it was kind of cool. It had a lot of potential. It was just frightfully expensive. Here's an ad for something called the X-Band. It says, on X-Band, you never know who or what you'll be matched with. And it looks like it's a little modem that you hook up to either your Genesis or your Super Nintendo, kind of like a Game Genie, and then the game goes in top, and uh, it hooks up to your phone line, and you can play games online, which is actually pretty cool. It says, stick your X-Band video game modem into your Genesis or Super NES machine, plug in your phone line, and in minutes, you're busting heads with hardcore gamers all over your city. Is it limited to just your city? That would be kind of weird, but I guess anything's better than, uh, you know, not playing online at all. So it looks, uh, says, works with tons of games like NHL 95 and Mortal Kombat 2. That would have been pretty cool, actually, to play against other people online in Mortal Kombat 2 back in the day. Here's a review for Knuckles Chaotix for the 32X. And uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience with this game. I have played it a few times. It's, it's I think it's a fun game. It's not a bad game. Um, but they were kind of kind of harsh on it here. They gave it a 3 for graphics, a 3 for sound, 2.5 for control, and a 2 for fun factor. And these games were expensive. It says uh, it's $69.99. Holy crap. That's more than our games are these days. It's funny because on the next page, they give uh, Supreme Warrior a pretty high score here. And... Uh, it looks like, I, I really, I don't know anything about this game, but judging from these pictures, it looks like one of those uh, stupid full motion video games, you know? It's for the 32X CD. So I'm guessing that's exactly what it is. And they gave it a four for graphics, five for sound, 3.5 for control, four for fun factor. Jeez. There's a cool little article here kind of showcasing the Super Nintendo's innovative moves that they made with uh, you know silicone graphics and the Super FX chip and the Super FX2. It's kind of cool to read through some of this and just uh, find out how a lot of that stuff was done. Here's another goofy review. I, I'm a little biased. I'm a huge Fatal Fury fan and a huge fighting game fan, but they uh, 
they were kind of, I feel like they were kind of harsh on Fatal Fury Special for the Super Nintendo. I thought it was a really good port for what the Super Nintendo could do. And honestly, uh, until I owned it, I rented it all the time and, and would play it for countless hours. To begin with, the game's premise is weak. Two brawling brothers known as the Bogards are looking for a fight. They've brought along a bunch of other fighters who are also looking for some knuckle dusting. Unfortunately, they didn't bring along the things they most needed. The enhancements from the Neo Geo version. Well, no shit. Of course it's not going to be as good as the Neo Geo version. They mentioned the graphics being poor, the controls being bad. I don't know. Whatever. You can't please everybody, you know? The graphics, they gave a 3.5, sound 4, control 3.5, fun factor 3. And the final statement, the Bogards are back and they brought some special fighting friends with them. This butt-kicking bonanza loses a little something in translation from the Neo Geo, though. Again, of course it did. It's the Super Nintendo. If you watched my arcade fighters videos that I just did, um, I covered a game called Galaxy Fight. Uh, that was out in arcades and Neo Geo and uh, here they did a, a review on it and uh, they did like this game it, it's weird though if you read this they they praise the control but then in the final ratings they gave control a 3.5 and holy cow the uh, price tag $239 for this game that is why I did not own a Neo Geo Here's a goofy little ad for um, some weird looking game for the 3DO and it looks like it has that, well, I don't know her name, it was that girl from Wayne's World. Um, but it looks like it stars her, it looks like it's a live action video game. I hated those live action movie games. I, I had a Sega CD and I just remember all these games that I would by thinking they were going to be fun games. It was just live action movie scenes the whole time. This is one thing that always confused me as a kid. I wanted a 3DO and um, you know back then it was like the Sega Genesis, the Nintendo, the, um, the Sony PlayStation, but the 3DO, you know, the way they did that console um, was they gave out the rights to different companies to make the console. I always knew of it as the Panasonic 3DO and then I started seeing different versions like this is the Gold Star 3DO. Here's a pro review on Gex and uh, it's a two pager. They really, they really enjoyed this one. I mean I do too. I know it's not the most popular game um, but they really, really enjoyed this one. They gave it a 4.5 for graphics, a 5 for sound, 4.5 for control, and 5 for fun factor. Here's another one that is a little bit shocking to me. I owned Myst for the Sega Saturn. I actually enjoyed the game. Uh, it was one of those games as a kid that um, kind of kids and adults could play. I remember my, uh, my mom actually kind of got into it too a bit. I never felt like it was that great of a game. They gave it a, a per um, an absolute perfect score. Absolute perfect score. It got a five for everything. Um, this is the 3DO version, and so it, it had already been out for a while before it even came to this. So it's not like it was new. They weren't playing it for the first time. So that's a little shocking to me, but whatever. Here's an ad for one of the worst games I've ever played. It's called Rise of the Robots. Now, to be fair, I've never played it for the 3DO. I played it for the, I think it was for the Super Nintendo. And I'm a fighting game junkie and I, I couldn't stand it. I didn't, I had no idea what I was playing. It was horrible. But they're, I don't know what they're going for here. It's a Brady Bunch type of um, advertisement and uh, it says, Alice doesn't live here anymore. Here's a two page ad for Judge Dredd. It says June 95. And if I remember correctly, this game was not very good. I really, I can't remember, I mean it looks kind of cool here, but I, there were so many games based on movies at the time, I can't keep track of them. I gave up on them, so I know I've played this, but I can't remember if it was good or not. The next few pages kind of focus on uh, sports video games, and I'm going to be honest, um, you know, I'm a sports junkie now. As a kid, 
I did not like sports video games. I, I um, a few games like Arch Rivals or, or you know Mutant League Football, that the games that were kind of over the top and and goofy and you know NFL Blitz and stuff like that. But I wasn't into the serious sports titles. I always thought they were kind of boring and the graphics were boring and everything looked the same. And I just wasn't a big fan. So. This is an ad I remember seeing all over the place when I was younger. This ad just sticks out in my head. I remember this art. And I was never actually all that interested in what it was, because again, I didn't really play any sports titles, but I just remember thinking the art was kind of cool. Here's another ad that, geez, I remember this one like it was yesterday, because I used to stare at this ad. I used to bring these magazines to school and when we'd have like a little bit of free time, I would look at my game magazines and I used to just sit there in class staring at this picture. This was uh, back in 95 and you gotta understand how cool this lot was right here. I always wanted to win this. Um, I know I entered to win it at least once. I, I, don't, um, I don't remember anything about the contest, but I, I know I wanted this so bad. I mean, this came with a, um, Jaguar, Super Nintendo, a computer, 32X, Genesis, Sega CD, a 3DO, and really, I mean, that sound system. Back then, that sound system was off the hook, and that TV, too. I mean, now, you look at it, it's kind of cheesy, but this was, I mean, this was cool. There's a couple reviews here for some Game Boy games. You got Earthworm Jim. I never played Earthworm Jim for the Game Boy. Um, I played it a lot for Super Nintendo and for the Sega Genesis. I never played it for the Game Boy. I didn't really play a whole lot of Game Boy. And here's the cheat section. And this was cool because, again, like I mentioned earlier, I didn't have a computer back in 95. I couldn't jump on the internet to look for cheats, you know. This is how I had to do it. I had to look in the back of these magazines. I remember sometimes even when I couldn't afford the magazine, I'd go to the store and bring a pen and paper with me and write down all these cheats and then take it home with me. It's funny, you look now at some of these cheats and they're just, I mean, it's hard to believe that some of them were cheats. Like in uh, Kasumi Ninja here for the Jaguar, the, the cheat is to fight as the same character. This one's pretty cool, for, uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo for the 3DO. Play as Akuma in the versus mode. This is pretty cool here, Funko Land was, I mean, I loved Funko Land. And if you're not familiar with Funko Land, when you would walk up to the counter, they'd have these, almost they look like newspapers, and they would have all these, their pricing listed for all of their games. And uh, over here you got games like uh, Adventure Island, eight dollars batman love batman that game's great six dollars bomberman ten bucks ducktales seven dollars i mean really they were just uh they were giving giving some of these games away over here is kind of like what we saw before the cheat section but this is uh just game genie or, or game genie and pro action replay codes is what this is um i never had a, a pro action replay Game Genie was like the one that came out when I was really young for Nintendo and it was just so cool and I had a Game Genie for Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, Sega Genesis and then later on had Game Shark for like the PlayStation and stuff like that but I never never had a, a pro action replay. Here's an advertisement for Rayman for the Jaguar and honestly um, this game saw many console releases later on but this was a, a definitely a cool looking game. I, I love the art style on this game. Even just looking at these screenshots, uh, you know, I wanna go play it right now. Here's a little tips and tricks type of deal here for Night Warriors, which is really cool. I had no idea what this was at the time and uh, had no idea that it was Capcom. And I think I just skipped past this as a kid. I didn't realize it was such a good fighter. And here's yet another ad for the colored Game Boys that came out at the time. I, I think these colored Game Boys are a little more rare 
on the original Game Boy. I know when the Game Boy Pocket came out, those were all different colors. Um, and that's really common, but I have not seen a lot of the original size Game Boys in color. And here's the Blockbuster World Video Game Championship 2. And this looks, uh, looks like a little competition that they would put on. It says, everyone who plays wins. Just for competing, you'll score cool trading cards to collect or trade with other video gamers. Okay. Post the highest score in your age category and chosen game format, and you'll walk away with the title of Store Champion. And here's another ad for the same Judge Dread game that they had a two-page ad for earlier. And then, of course, the next page, they're kind of showing it off, uh, previewing it. I'm not sure what the Marvel Overpower card game from Fleer was. I collected X-Men cards as a kid, um, but I'm not sure what this is. But I'll be honest, this, this artwork right here is incredible. This is just so cool looking. So here they're talking a little bit about Donkey Kong Country, but this is part of the Blockbuster World Video Game Championship 2. And they're kind of talking about how this cartridge was set up with uh, uh, different levels from that game and then NBA Championship Tournament Edition. And it looks like, um, it looks like a pretty cool little competition that they used to hold. I don't know how many they had, it looks like uh, the first one was in 94, and it kind of shows some pictures from it. It looks like that included NBA Jam and Sonic 3 and maybe Clay Fighter. This was always one of my favorite pages in GamePro. Uh, it was the Buyer's Beware page, and, and this was kind of funny because a lot of times, if you had a question, you couldn't just jump, not everybody could just jump online and, and get an answer. It's not like today. Uh, so back then you had to call people and write to people and all kinds of stuff. So this guy here says, uh, I have a complaint concerning 3DO controllers. I purchased a 3DO controller in October and since then I'm on my third controller. It seems that I received some sort of static electricity shock when I put the controller down, which in turn kills the controller. Why does this happen? I'll be honest, that sounds kind of... Uh that sounds kind of scary. Uh, we have also heard of this problem and we think we have identified its source. Consumers using connectors for the 3DO that are not licensed for use or may be diverting the wrong electrical wattage to the unit, thereby shorting it out. Please remember to use only 3DO connectors with your unit. If you have any other questions, please call Panasonic Customer Support. So that was actually from um, a Panasonic Customer Support Center representative. Here's a uh, simple ad for Earthworm Jim Special Edition for the Sega CD. I never played the Sega CD version. I, I always figured, hey, I played it on the Genesis and, and the Super Nintendo. Why do I need to play it here? I kind of wish I would have now because um, it, it is a really cool game. I wish I would have played it back then. And here they have some previews of games in the back here. Uh, the Adventures of Batman and Robin for the Genesis. Um, you have Street Fighter the movie, the game, for Saturn and PlayStation, which I covered in one of my videos for the uh, Sega Saturn. Um, you got Street Fighter the interactive movie. I'll be honest, I don't know anything about this. Um, I just recently read something about it. I don't even know if it came out in America. Maybe it, maybe it did. I don't know. I've seen Japanese versions of the game, but. Um, I don't know anything about it, honestly. WWF Raw down here for the 32X, which, uh, again, I mean, the 32X was, I just didn't get it. I mean, this WWF Raw came out for everything else and, and it looked just about the same on everything else. Why would I pick up a 32X and get the game for that? And it was probably one of those $70 games too. So why would I pick it up for the 32X? I just didn't, I didn't understand the 32X. Penn and Teller's Smoke and Mirrors. 
This is the game that has that infamous desert bus thing on it. And um, I don't think this game ever came out. Maybe somebody could correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think this game saw the light of day. Maybe they realized, you know, what they were doing. But um, I remember the whole desert bus thing. Here they show Interact game products. Uh, they made a lot of third-party stuff for different consoles. Um, here was this crazy Game Boy add-on. I remember seeing this as a kid and I don't know, it was really cool, but at the same time it was just so bizarre looking and it was a little much. And I'm not sure what these controllers are about. I know they were programmable, but uh, I'm like, what do you need to program on a controller? I, I didn't I didn't understand that. And the very back of the magazine shows Justice League Task Force, which uh, was actually a it was actually a cool fighting game uh, back when it came out. I uh, I actually had a, a lot of fun with it. I, I wish there was a little more to it, but uh, it was cool. You know, I loved my fighting games, and I thought it was pretty cool. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm glad everybody joined me for another video. Please like, please subscribe, yada yada, all that good stuff. Got a lot of um, video game reviews coming in the works right now. A couple wrestling games coming up. So, you know, hold your friggin' horses and stay tuned. You know, that's all I can say.